car, wow. I done bounced back, baby. Back on the Swisher house. I'm back on the team. It's going down. It's power wow. I remember coming up as just a youngster scrub. When people think you ain't gonna make it, they don't show much love. So I pushed and I shoved. And I struggled and worked. God granted me with blessings, but pain came first. A lot of. I'm the team magnet. I'm the people's champ. I'm a player on a mission for the Benjamins and Grants. I stay up on my toes like a ballet dancer. Boys questioning my gangster. I got 17 answers at the club. I don't post up in the VIP. I'm just chilling at the bar with my thugs and jeans. I got the heart of a hustler, the mind of a nerd. Coming from the 713, the CD is served. What it do? Today's video is about Paul Wall, a Texas legend, a man who had the internet going nuts, the people's champ. We can go on and on, but the man is well respected for his contributions to the culture. I have a video about his history with Chameleon Air, which you should definitely go check out. I remember last year when Paul Wall went viral for a tweet saying that Paul Wall and fellow white rapper Bubba Sparks wouldn't fly in today's climate and that really fueled me to make this video today because Paul Wall is as genuine as it gets from what I've seen. But before I get more into the video, I would first like to thank you guys for coming to see this because you guys could be doing a million other things right now but stay here with me and I appreciate that. If you guys like the content, you guys should like, comment, and subscribe to help the channel grow. Also, follow my Instagram too. That would be greatly appreciated. You guys can always reach out and just show me some love. It's all good. Let me know where you're tuning in from. Represent where you're from, especially if you're from Houston. Comment down below your favorite Paul Wall project, song, verse, all of that, because I want to know. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Paul Wall was born Paul Slayton in Houston, Texas in March of 1981. Paul grew up on the north side of Houston and he said that he didn't really have a lot of money growing up. He has said that he definitely didn't have it the worst where he was growing up, but he definitely didn't have it the best at the same time. He was abused by his dad who was a drug addict and his dad was also out there diddling little kids. I'm not going to go too into that and actually say what I mean, but most of you guys catch my drift. I say that to say that Paul hasn't seen his real dad since he was five years old, and for a period of time, Paul just had his mom and they were broke. His dad's side of the family had the money according to him, but didn't help out. On top of having a rough home life, Paul was the subject of frequent bullying growing up. The area he grew up in was very diverse because you had Asians, Mexicans, whites, etc. He would get bullied by other white kids who did terrible things to him. Paul has told stories of kids tying him to a tree and putting lunch meat on his face and letting dogs loose on him. They would also make Paul Wall lie in the middle of the street and kids would throw golf balls at him if he moved. Just terrible things that nobody should have to go through. And on a side note, I know that I have some younger viewers, so if you're in high school or anywhere else, if you see bullying, definitely speak up because that stuff isn't cool at all. But back to Paul Wall, and one of the things that he grew up loving was rap. Back Back then, it was just a hobby for him, and it was just something that him and his friends did for fun on the school bus and at the lunch table in junior high and in high school. I think that a lot of people can relate to this because me personally, I know in middle school and high school, I was doing the same exact thing. The Screwed Up Click, which is a legendary hip hop collective from Houston, ended up being a big inspiration for Paul. In an interview, Paul would say, that was definitely what inspired me. In Houston, we wouldn't do a normal New York freestyle cypher. It would be our way and our style of doing it, like a screwed up Texas version of a cypher. SUC gave Houston its own personal identity that separated it from the rest of the world. 
rap a lot, put us on the map where we could contend with anyone in terms of Scarface being able to go bar for bar with anybody. Jay Prince showed us in the whole rap game how to make music independently and hustle it without needing someone else. He gave us the blueprint, helped mold us, and then right after that, the SUC came right behind and gave us the identity of our culture, the things that make us unique and different compared to other cities. This is a city where anybody can do it. You just have to go out there and work. If you have a pride about you where you're too cool to do something, then it'll hold you back and get you left behind. This is a city where the guys washing the cars end up owning the dealership. Rapper Lil Kiki, who was a part of the screwed up clique, was one of Paul's main influences. The legendary DJ Screw was at the helm of the screwed up clique and his tapes are the stuff of legend. Coming up, Paul said that when he turned on the TV, he would see and hear East Coast music. He turned on the radio in Houston and he would hear all West Coast music. It would be the DJ Screw tapes that really resonated with him due to the tapes highlighting local music and people had the ability to relate to what was on the tape. The people on the tape talked about the things that Paul was seeing on a daily basis and they were in a language that Paul could understand. There would be a kid that grew up with Paul Wall that would end up being a huge rapper as well and we all know him as Chameleon there. Here's a clip of Paul and Cam talking about their come up. This clip Clip is from around 2001, I believe. Man, me and Camille, you know what I'm saying? We started off as water boys in the game, man. We was passing out flyers, you know what I'm saying? We was DJing, throwing parties, man. We did everything. We, we used to be the bouncers at the club, the door, man. You know what I'm saying? Taking the door stuff. But really, man, what we was really hot on was promotions, man. We was the water boys, man. Uh, you know what I'm saying? We started at the bottom and worked our way up to the top. That's how we got in cool with Watts, and you know what I'm saying? We, we of course, rap. We did our own thing. Uh -huh. And then, you know what I'm saying? Good mind thinks alike, you know what I'm saying? You know how the fairy tale goes. You know, Already. Great minds think alike. We came together, collaborated with Watson, and you know, one thing led to another, and it was like, you know what I'm saying, Bill Gates, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We took over the game. God, tell the truth. We took over the game. Man, how did. So as you heard, they both had to work from the ground up in the industry. They hosted parties, were bouncers, passed out flyers, and did a bunch of other stuff to get in the door. They were doing things for Masterpiece No Limit Records at a point in time and eventually went on to work for Michael Watts' Swisher House label. This is what Paul Wall had to say about when he first started working for Swisher House. When I got to work doing other things for Swisher House CEO Michael Watts and Ron C, of course I always wanted to rap with them. But I didn't think it was a possibility. I never asked because I didn't think it was possible. I was rapping at the time. Our group was the Sleepwalkers and we were trying to do our thing, but it was more like a hobby. We'd go pay for studio time, perform here and there, the same thing everybody always do. Speaking of Ron C, he would be the man that taught Paul Wall how to DJ when Paul Wall was DJing. Ron C's cousin is also the person who gave Paul Slayton the name Paul Wall because he initially went by the name Over flow and also I've seen comments of people from Houston saying that back in the day they thought that Paul Wall's name was Pow Wow because how he said it I don't know if that's true or not so someone can let me know in the comments but people thought that his name was initially Pow Wow but back to Cam and Paul Wall and the Sleepwalkers was the group Cam and Paul were in before they got into the color changing click days according to the fourth installment in the beef series in 1999 after listening to Paul and Cam's demo Michael Watt would record some tracks and started putting them on Swisher House mixtapes. Now for those who don't know, Swisher House is a legendary Texas based independent music label. At the time, the demo Paul and Cam recorded was gaining some traction, but Swisher House wasn't an official label yet, so instead, Paul and Cam jumped ship to a label called Paid in Full that their friends owned and ran. So in June of 2002, Cam and Paul released what I've seen many people call a classic, which is the album Get Your Mind Correct. They called it local and didn't think that it would blow up. This included DJs, people on the street, and others. The album peaked at number 67 on the Billboard Top R&B Hip Hop Albums chart, and this album went on to be nominated for Indie Album of the Year in the Source magazine. It also went on to sell over 100,000 copies independently, which is pretty impressive. Paul Wall would be asked about the success of the project, and he would say, I definitely was surprised in that I didn't expect it. We did have a firm grasp on the underground back then, but it was more localized. 
regionalized Texas, Louisiana, some of it, you can't really count the numbers because it's not necessarily BDS spins or record sales. It's just mixtapes that get bootlegged and dubs. It would be hard for us to really grasp how big of a household name we were, what we would do. This is really right at the beginnings of the internet and all of that, so nobody really knew what we looked like. It wasn't no videos or any of that. We knew we were gonna do good, but we didn't know how good. Some people didn't even know that Paul Wall was white and he's told stories of people finding out he was white while he was performing at shows get your mind correct would come out on paid in full entertainment which was owned by benjamin thompson aka mad hatter this guy mad hatter worked at one of the radio stations in houston so it could potentially be seen as a conflict of interest if he played cam and paul due to them being signed to him but get your mind correct got so hot that it had to come from the people above mad hatter in order to play cam and paul's music on the radio in houston because it was on the radio and other places like Dallas at the time. This connection to Mad Hatter would do wonders because he was the one who got the business in order for Paul Wall. He had relationships with DJs. He told Paul Wall that he needed to do drops for radio stations, do interviews, open shows, favors, etc. Get Your Mind Correct was paid for mainly out of Cam and Paul's pockets because they didn't want to have to recoup a bunch of money. This is a project that people still talk about today with it being regarded as a classic to many it has left many people clamoring for a part two. However, the relationship between Chameleonaire and Paul Wall would change after this project. In this video, like I said earlier, I'm not gonna go too deep into the whole Cam and Paul situation because I have a whole video about that. You can go watch that. People love that video. So yes, definitely go watch that. Skipping ahead to 2004 and Paul Wall would release his debut studio album, Chick Magnet, which peaked at number 54 on the US top R&B hip hop albums chart. This ended up being his first and last solo album on Paid in Full Entertainment because Paul Wall would end up jumping back to Swisher House. Now Swisher House had Paul Wall and Mike Jones and these two went on a tear as we would see. But speaking of Mike Jones, he would have a song that we pretty much all know called Still Tippin' which featured Paul Wall and Slim Thug and was released officially in November of 2004 as the lead single for Mike Jones' debut album. What some may not know is that the version that we have today is technically a remix of an original record that was recorded around 2002, appeared on several different Texas mixtapes in 2003, and appeared on the Swisher House project the day after Hell Broke Loose that released in March of 2004. This original version had a different beat and had Chameleonaire on it instead of Paul Wall. Somewhere during this time period, Chameleonaire and Mike Jones started to get into it, which some think led to the removal of Chameleonaire from the song and he would be replaced by Paul Wall on the version that we have today. Another reason why Chameleonaire probably wasn't on the version that we have today, according to an OK Player article, is that the original producer for the track, Big Time, fell out with Michael Watts and Swisher House. This then prompted the label to want to pair up the song's vocals with a different beat maker. The label didn't want to have five people on the song because back then it would be Paul Wall, Slim Thug, Magnificent, who recorded over the remix version, Mike Jones, and Chameleonaire. Swisher House ultimately cut Magnificent and Chameleonaire and instead went with their own guy Paul Wall because he was signed to Swisher House. Sally Williams is the producer for the remixed version of Still Tippin' and in that OK Player article I just mentioned, he broke down the making of the beat. I don't know about you guys, but Still Tippin' is an all-time classic beat for me, classic stuff right there, but one person who initially wasn't a fan of the beat was Paul Wall. He didn't know what he was going to say or how to rap on the beat at first. It was T. Ferris who believed in the record, and for those who don't know, T. Ferris did manage Paul Wall at a point in time. People in the camp at the time favored a song called Got It Sold Up by Mike Jones because it had a Nutcracker sample in the song and Christmas was coming up around this time. 
definitely go check out that song if you have not it's one of my favorite mike jones songs and go check out the original version of the song because there's a remixed version on his debut album that is just it's, it's okay to me it's pretty good but i think that the original version is a lot better t ferris believed in still tipping over got it sold up and he was definitely right thinking that the song was gonna go like i said paul wall at first wasn't feeling the beat for still tipping but this can be due to him hearing it on a boombox versus when he heard it in t ferris's jaguar car now with the bass and everything he was feeling the beat still tipping is iconic i mean everyone killed their verse and paul wall came in last and he had so many quotables how he came in and said what it do was paul wall on the people's champ he also said people's feelings get hurt when they figure out what i'm worth we can't forget i got the internet going nuts this song back then and even now today is huge with it peaking at number 60 on the billboard how 100 charts upon its official release as a single at the top of 2005 paid in full entertainment released controversy sales which dropped after cam and paul left the label in an interview with donnie houston paul wall revealed that when him and chameleonaire signed to paid in full they signed a five album deal two paul wall and chameleonaire albums two solo albums from both of them and a water boys album with paul wall chameleonaire 50 50 and lou hawk but a few months later after controversy sells in may of 2005 paul wall would release his how to be a player project with swisher house fans wouldn't have to wait long for paul wall's sophomore album with the first single for the album being sitting sideways in which that released in august of that year this song would feature Big Pokey, who's one of the original members of the Screwed Up Click, and was the first time Paul Wall had worked with him, along with Lil Kiki, who was originally on the song. Atlantic Records, who Paul Wall was signed to at the time, gave him a choice of having Big Pokey or Lil Kiki on the song due to them both not being signed to the label. As we know, Big Pokey was chosen in large part to his voice being sampled in the hook of the song. The next next single for his sophomore album would be They Don't Know. This song did appear on Paul Wall's debut album Chick Magnet as the first track with Mike Jones but there's also a version with Bun B who's one of the people sampled in the hook of the song. The song had already been played out in Texas due to it being on Chick Magnet but the people at Asylum in Atlantic wanted the record to go national and wanted it to be a single to let people nationally know what was going on in Texas. The album The People's Champ would released in September of 2005 peaking at number one on the Billboard 200 selling 176 thousand copies in his first week this album was met with generally positive reviews from critics and is beloved by fans today girl would be the third single for this album this song remains paul wall's highest charting solo single to date with it peaking at number 35 on the billboard hot 100 the fourth and final single for the album would be drive slow which is a song with yay and glc drive slow appeared on both late registration and the people's champ with late registration dropping a month prior to the people's champ people love paul wall's verse on drive slow but he has revealed that his drive slow verse was actually the first verse that he wrote when he was riding sitting sideways he thought that the rhymes didn't go hand in hand with that beat despite liking them and decided to save the verse for a future collaboration and this collaboration ended up being with Ye. At the time of the making of Drive Slow, Paul Wall had only met Ye on a couple of different occasions, with Paul Wall making grills for him and hanging out with him in the studio a couple of times in Houston. When it came down to making the song, Paul didn't think that he was going to end up on the final version of the song. He laid his part of the song at his studio in Houston, but Plain Pat, who has been working with Ye for years, told Paul that Ye liked his verse but wanted him to come to LA to do it over. Paul Wall would fly out to LA but he began to get paranoid about the MTV show Punked where basically they pranked celebrities. 
his label mate, Mike Jones, had just got punked. While in the airport, Paul Wall and his friend got approached by two detectives. Paul Wall started talking crazy to the detectives because he thought that they were actors for the show Punked, but they were no actors and were real detectives. Things began to subside and the detectives would leave and this would leave Paul Wall confused because he was adamant that he was getting punked, but he wasn't. After this, he would drop off his friend at a hotel and drive to the studio session. While Paul was in a car service going to the studio, the driver would get pulled over by the cops right by the studio, but Paul was allowed to leave due to him not being the driver. He would go into the studio session and record his drive slow verse, still thinking that he was getting pranked. After doing the verse for Ye, he still didn't think that it was going to end up on late registration until DJ Drama called him and told him that he made the album due to him hearing his verse at the listening party for late registration. About the song, Paul Wall would say, to be able to do a song with Kanye West and then a video with Hype Williams who directed the video, that's a highlight of any artist's career. Then T.I. did a remix version and put it on his album too, but for Kanye to put it on his album Late Registration, Jay-Z had to sign off on it. He always let me know, you know you owe me for signing off on that because they didn't charge me. He was looking out because really that's unheard of for somebody to put it on their album and then let let you put it on your album too so i definitely appreciate that even then me doing a song with kanye i thought i was being punked the whole time a fun fact about this song is that m.i.a was also supposed to be on the track but that never materialized due to her saying that she was busy around that time it's rumored that paul wall's verse filled in for what would have been hers but with all due respect i think that everything happens for a reason if that's true i can't imagine her on that song at all but for paul wall 2005 wouldn't be over yet and would prove to be the biggest year of his career nelly would release released a single Grills in 2005 which featured Paul Wall and this song went to number one on the Billboard Hot 100. What the song is about is very self-explanatory and Paul Wall being on the song especially at this time with the subject matter makes complete sense. The recording for the track took place in Atlanta at Southside Studio and upon arriving Paul was very intimidated due to the gold, platinum, and diamond plaques that were all over the building. He did didn't know if he was going to live up to that expectation, but it was Nelly who hyped him up and gave him the spark to deliver his verse. To cap off this year, this would be the year that Paul Wall would get married to his wife and he has been married ever since. Now we move into 2006, and while Paul didn't drop a project this year, he did a handful of verses. Some of the more notable appearances he did this year were when he featured on DJ Khaled's Posse Cut, Holla At Me, which peaked at number 59 on the Billboard Hot 100. Another one would be on the song Way I Be Leaning with Juvenile for his album Reality Check. Paul Wall would also feature on Hulk Hogan's daughter, Brooke Hogan's song About Us, which peaked at number 33 on the Billboard Hot 100. How that song came about is that Brooke Hogan would be at the Hit Factory in Miami and Paul Wall happened to be in the next studio. He had heard that Hulk Hogan was next door and he was a big Hulk Hogan fan, so he came over. While he came over and met Hulk Hogan, Brooke Hogan was away taking a break while Hulk Hogan and Paul Wall chatted it up. While this is happening, Scott Storch, who produced the track, was making the beat for what went on to be the song about us. Paul Wall would ask Hulk Hogan who was that singing on the song and Hulk Hogan told him that it was his daughter. This blew him away and he really wanted to do the song. Paul Wall would immediately start writing his verses on his sidekick phone. Man, that is... That just tells you the times right there, the sidekick phone. And when Brooke Hogan came back into the studio to record, she saw Paul Wall in the booth recording his verse. The rest is pretty much history. Paul Wall would make Brooke Hogan a grill, which you can see in the music video, and he also wanted to make her dad a Hulk Hogan one as well. Chunk Up the Deuce by Lil Kiki would be another notable song from 2006 that Paul Wall would feature on. He had yet another crazy verse in this song. 2007 would start off with Paul Wall releasing Break Em Off featuring Lil Kiki, which would be the first single for his third studio album. This song would peak at number 72 
on the Billboard Hot 100. The next single I'm Throwed would come a month and some change later and feature Jermaine Dupri, who Paul Wall previously worked with on the song Grills. I'm Throwed would peak at number 87 on the Billboard Hot 100. The album Get Money Stay True would release in April of 2007 and would peak at number 8 on the Billboard 200, selling 92,000 copies in its first week. It's unfortunate, but commercially, Paul Wall would never reach the success of his sophomore album, The People's Chance or with his third album, Get Money, Stay True, again. This never really concerned Paul Wall because he was never concerned about record sales and wanted to simply focus on the music. His favorite artist had never sold millions and millions of records. He would continue making music, appearing on songs, dropping projects, and things of that nature. One of the things that I wanted to mention is that in 2007, Paul Wall would appear in the VH1 documentary Blinged Blood Diamonds and Hip Hop. This documentary would show his trip to Africa to bring awareness to the diamond trade in Sierra Leone and hip hop's role and negatively impacting the area's communities. About this experience, Paul Wall would say, The whole experience out there, bro, it was everything. We got the UN escorting us. We met some of them. There was like a village too. Growing up here, man, first you're taught that everything is perfect and then you realize it's all lies and BS. And then later on, you realize the whole world is like that and that's kind of how it was for me. I grew up thinking America is great and then you're like, dang, this stuff is effed up how it happened or how it still is. And then you go out to other places in the world and you're like, dang, the world is really effed up how we treat each other. In an interview, Paul Wall would admit that before hearing the remix of Ye's song Diamonds from Sierra Leone, he had no idea about the Civil War and the atrocities that were happening in the African mines. He had no clue that the very same diamonds in the grills that he was wearing and selling could be dug up by kidnapped young boys. It was embarrassing for me to have never heard of Sierra Leone and to have never heard of their struggle. The Civil war just ended in 2001 so the effects of the war are evident they're very evident there's often no electricity no running water and you can get an electric generator for as little as 200 to 300 bucks and that's not a lot of money for people to donate if we can put our heads together for a good cause then it's all good we can make a difference something else that i wanted to mention as part of paul wall's story is his support for the military my grandfather was a lieutenant colonel in the military and I grew up in a very small family. He was all I knew for a long time. And then I have a lot of friends who were in the military. I lost a couple of friends in Iraq. And then I heard a statistic that 80% of the military in the Middle East. And then I heard a statistic that 80% of the military in the Middle East is either from Texas or stationed in Texas. Paul Wall has been on numerous USO tours that provides live entertainment, such as comedians, actors and musicians, social facilities, and other programs to members of the United States Armed Forces and their families. You can find a lot of pictures of Paul Wall on these tours and with people in the military. One of the last things I want to mention about 2007 is that Paul Wall would be in a group called Expensive Taste with Travis Barker, who's known for being the drummer of Blink-182, and Skinhead Rob, who alongside Travis Barker, is a part of the group The Transplants. Paul Wall has an expensive taste tattoo on his forearm and there's even an expensive taste clothing line. The clothing label was born pretty much out of Paul Wall's frustration with his contractual obligations to Atlantic Records which prevented the trio of Skinhead Rob and Travis Barker from pursuing a recording contract as a group also named Expensive Taste. Since Atlantic didn't want to let them be a group they decided to make it a clothing line. Expensive Taste has a mixtape together and has appeared all together on a Paul Wall album with that being Heart of a Champion which released in 2010. In 2008, we would see the release of the first single, Busy Body, featuring Debbie and Mouse for Paul Wall's fourth studio album, Fast Life. Fast Life would come out in May of 2009 and would peak at number 15 on the Billboard 200 charts. 
With this album, Paul wanted to step it up lyrically because he wanted to show real strength and emotion because rap can be deep at times. He took this opportunity to write lyrics that told his story to show people that he can get deep. He also felt like with this album, he stepped it up in the production department. In the period between Get Money Stay True to Fast Life, Paul Wall was recording nonstop for Fast Life. Also with this album, Paul Wall was no longer on Atlantic Records. Now we get to 2010 and Paul Wall would release a mixtape in June called Soul Music. The very next month in July, his fifth studio album called Heart of a Champion was released. The album peaked at number 56 on the US Billboard 200 chart, selling 7,600 copies in its first week. This would end up being Paul Wall's last album on Swisher House. In 2014, Paul Wall would comment on this in an interview with Hip Hop DX because previous to this interview, Paul did an interview with XXL that made it sound like after six years, Swisher House left him without any knowledge of how to put out his own music. Then Slim Thug came along to get him out of this rut and put him under his wing. About this, Paul Wall would say, no, nah, I mean, it kind of is true in a way because I never wanted to be CEO. I just want to be an artist. I like making music. I don't want to be one trying to figure out how we're going to market the album. I mean, I'm good and capable of that, but I would rather spend my time making music and being an artist. It was just my time to do my own independent thing. But no, Swisher House never let me out like that. It was more like a mutual thing. They actually looked out for me by letting me go down my own independent route and my contract was up anyways so you know when your contract is up your contract is up we could have renegotiated for a new contract or something like that but you know when you're doing it yourself and you're making your own money independently you're getting a bigger cut it's just a different stage in my career where i'm trying to take complete control of my music he would further comment that Slim Thug definitely did take him under his wing and showed him a different aspect of the game. But going back to 2010 and Paul Wall was having issues with his health around this time. His unhealthy habits led to his weight being over 300 pounds. In order to lose this weight, he initially tried to stop drinking lean and taking pills, but this didn't work out the way he thought it would. His doctor told him that he was morbidly obese and this led him to getting gastric sleeves surgery which ended up with him losing 100 pounds. Paul Wall credits the surgery for saving his life. But I mean, after 2010, Paul Wall went independent and he released a lot of projects. So I'm not gonna sit here and talk about every single project that the man has dropped because it is a lot. We will be here all day. I wanna dedicate this last part of the documentary to discussing different things in Paul Wall's life and career. The first thing is grills, and this is one of the things that are synonymous with Paul Wall. In 1998, he would meet a guy from Brooklyn who had removal style gold teeth. This guy would open up a store and happen to be the store where he used to buy Swisher House CDs and tapes from. During this time period in the South, people had permanent gold teeth, so it was a trip for people to see the removable kind like the Wu-Tang Clan had. Paul Wall would go to the man and ask him if he could pass out flyers for him, and in exchange, he asked asked for a personalized grill sold to him wholesale. Paul ended up bringing this guy a lot of business and he ended up showing him how to make these grills. One of Paul's homeboys opened a store in Trinity Gardens in Houston where they sold Swisher House CDs and grills. Not that long after this, Paul Wall would get introduced to Johnny Dang while he was working at a flea market. Him and Johnny Dang would have a relationship and work together ever since. Paul Wall has made grills for a lot of notable people such as Ye, Schoolboy Q, Ryan Locked, Jay-Z, Beyonce, etc. He would say that due to his hometown baseball team, the Houston Astros, going to the World Series, he and Johnny Dang were offering the team free grills. They pulled through and actually did this to the excitement of the players and coaching staff. In 2017, Paul Wall would also drop a song called World Series Grills with Lil Kiki and Zero. The Astros would go on to win the 2017 World Series and do the same thing this year, which prompted more World Series Grills. This year, Paul Wall would drop another song called How About Them Strolls featuring Sam Knight in celebration of them winning. I also didn't know that in 2005, when the Astros went to the World Series, 
Paul Wall made an Astros remix to his song called They Don't Know. This man is so much of an Astros fan that he nearly named his son after Roger Clemens who played for the Houston Astros back in the day. Instead, he opted to name his son in dedication to the late great Fat Pat. His son is named William Patrick Slayton with Patrick being the real name of Fat Pat. I don't want to get too much into the whole lean thing with Paul Wall, but something else to know is his love of car. His car of choice is old school Cadillacs and of course slabs which stands for slow, loud, and banging. Slabs are an important part of Houston culture and Paul Wall has referenced slabs in songs and on his album titles. Slab God being an album he released in 2015 and songs such as Slab Sitting Low on his subculture album that released in 2015. One thing I never knew about Paul Wall is that he's been in multiple movies. Movies like Furnace in 2007, I Hope They Serve Beer in Hell in 2009, Extinction Predator X in 2010, and The Holy Spoof in 2014. The last thing I want to touch on regarding Paul Wall is that the man still has the internet going nuts. At the start of the video, I talked about how I remembered last year when Paul Wall went viral for a tweet saying that Paul Wall and fellow white rapper Bubba Sparks wouldn't fly in today's climate and this tweet got a lot of flack. People didn't take too kindly to this tweet because people love Paul Wall because he was never a gimmick. Since making this script just a couple weeks ago, Paul Wall was trending again when comedian Tony Baker tweeted out, who are your personal top five white rappers excluding Eminem? So I guess Paul Wall was right, but the man has been through a lot. Nearly dying in 2010 from his health, got into a bad car accident with his son in 2018, getting arrested, etc. But he's still around and kicking. People love and will always love Paul Wall, especially in Houston because he gives back to the community that he's from. Before I get into the outro, I do want to mention some of the Paul Wall songs that I love and you should definitely go check out. Songs like Swangin' in the Rain, Crumble the Satellite, his verse on ASAP Rocky's Purple Swag Remix, Bangin' Screw, Explosive Freestyle, and his verse on Travis Scott's song, Dance on the Moon. All in all, let me know what you thought of the video. I love you guys with all my heart. Peace.